Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Right. In my inquiry into self, I realised that I don't just love spirituality. And I'm not only excited by politics now because of Jeremy Corbyn's valuable place within it, although I still fight his cause for the right reasons, which, of course, are his policies. Um, I'm going to use some language here right now because I'm quoting Will Mortimer, who's a very good friend on here. Um, he said, I've always been somewhere around the centre-left mark on the scale of political leaning, but of late the left's constant virtue signalling and whining has become unbearable. It is as though they're wanking themselves into a frenzy of back-patting liberalistic codswallop. Am I the only one seeing this? My reply, um, as always with a little philosophy added to the mix, is that... With a bit of Brexit battles with Chancellor Hammond, a change of tactic is 100% necessary. We need a kind of politics. The Liberals have become non-existent. Labour need to win them over and also need to win over the Greens. And Corbyn has some fantastic green policies up his sleeve, which includes looking into free energy, wave energies, etc. to win them over. And these policies are more than just necessary in a changing world. We need to win over UKIP as well. And that's not hard after all the battles that have been going on there. And the idea of unity rather than disconnection and more war, more killing, working for disarmament rather than World War Three, working with people like Vladimir Putin rather than getting his back up, ending the hell in Palestine, but ag agreeing to discussions with their government, no matter how distasteful that is to the USA. A softer approach to Brexit is necessary. His approach to running this country is necessary for the world, let alone the country. Um, I joined Labour this time for all of the above, and I know that they will be getting into power. May is far too le uh, far left, uh, far right rather, with her wrecking of this country, caring only for the rich, kicking the elderly and the poor and disabled and carers like myself in the guts and more. Um, so no, um, Corbyn is our man. This world needs him. It's more than I love the philosophy of everything that uh, has the possibility of changing lives. That's what I'm really, I think, excited about, for better or for worse. So I love the philosophy of politics even. Can there be a philosophy of politics, I wonder? Well, I think, yes, there can. Um, to see the pattern in everything is a gift. How things work for someone and how it can work against it and how it can work for others and, and for some and not for others. How everything is seen through different perspectives. The planet doesn't naturally evolve through one-sided views of nature. Why should we as people evolve through one-sided views of other people? Be different and learn new through three-dimensional thinking instead of two-dimensional decisions. Also like um, how spirituality can work for almost all people, but religion for a few. Which causes divisions that evil politicians who work for their own rather than the whole jumps upon and uses these things and uses the hell out of each nation and um, how and how those who can't grasp that spirituality won't work for them are likely to be those who see spirituality as the same thing as religion but even spir spirituality is a kind of philosophy where religion is steadfast in its ways spirituality is far-reaching and meets everyone somewhere much of my criticism of religion comes about when I see it not only affirming the system of normalcy, but teaching people how to live there comfortably. It causes us to remain stuck in the old world, as does a lot of poor psychotherapy. Cheap religion teaches us how to live successfully in a sick system. And the same goes with policies. Um, and politics. These two entities are not dissimilar where they will protect their own. 
that is until now, uh, until Jeremy Corbyn type policies comes in. Here you can see how philosophy in policies can either grow nations or make them unimportant. The way they, uh, the, they, the MPs, council workers, social workers, priests and popes and the like, use our behaviour and reactions to things and to each other to control us. This behaviour leads to psycho, uh, philosophical questioning and in the end hopefully answers. I love the unknown and I've always loved the unknown since I was a child. I had Arthur C. Clarke books, um, books on UFOs, books on spirits and ghosts and mediums. I love to look into why people do things and I want to find answers as to why people's deepest, darkest responses due to their past experiences um, affect them and how they affect them and why they affect them and the responses to that. Some may not like this about me, but it is deeply embedded in me and I wonder uh, how many of you out there, like me, have collected a lot of don't likes in our lifetime and wonder uh, why older people end up so grumpy and angry with life? How many don't likes have you accumulated over your lifetime so far? I mean, as a kid, uh, it was, um, I don't like greens, I don't like my vegetables. And as you grow, uh, your past likes and dislikes change and you may tolerate things like eating your greens, knowing that they're good for you. Some of you ate them because your parents made you. Some of us were doing it accommodating what our parents told us to do for fear of being punished and some defied their parents. And we wonder who turned out to be the better person and who turned out to be the successful person. There's a big difference between those two types of people and rather than rewarding the successful person because he gained success by shafting others over, we should be awarding the better person who gained by doing good in the world, by working for the greater good of all. The ones who turned out to be the person who went on to do the best in the world and for the world um, in an altruistic way. We need to question what does our parenting style do to our children as well. This is an important question. Does strict parenting stunt our inner growth and ability to say no in adulthood? Or does it prepare us for real life where we can't have everything the way we want it? Jeremy Corbyn, for instance, came from parents who campaigned from, for uh, world peace and for peace uh, all over. And now, all his life too, he has campaigned for peace. Parenting clearly has a big influence on our values and what we choose to become and how we show uh, up in the world. A person like Jeremy is necessary in this day and age and we need this type of leader. We all know that the way our parents parented us, even the most resistant of us, must know that this had a profound effect upon who we are today. This is a reality that is necessary to think upon when we think about how we should parent the next generation. So let's go back to our greens. Over time, knowing that they're good for you can even grow to like them. You may go one step further and become a vegetarian, making wonderful meals from these once hated greens. Our philosophy on life is the same, but for some reason, many of us find something to dislike for one reason or another. A type of person because they reminded us of someone else. We may say, I don't like this bald man because he reminds me of my friend's dad who hurt her all the time. We may mistrust the political party because at the time we had wealth, but that wealth has gone now because of certain policies. Yet we remain steadfast in a belief that this party was the one that your parents believed in. So it must be the right one and we must stick with um, hope rather than decide to change. We may uh, dislike a certain accent or race. We have our reasons, but those reasons are now so outdated, we tend to hope our vision of reality is right because we don't like to be wrong and we don't like to change that reality. Philosophy of religion, politics, spirituality merges these things as one. I like that because it gives us cause to understand it from one perspective. 
especially where I have been called out as being a bit too woo-woo in my political type videos. We all experience an intolerance when we're not getting something from the perspective of someone else. Fear is in human terms always our problem. There is the incidence of fear of change and that is a big problem. Some people fear to, uh, fear to think deeper because it makes them feel that they might be wrong. And this is our shadow that this fear is always a shadow within us that even the good and loving amongst us have these, uh, these deepest, darker sides of us um, that we prefer not to show to others. And when you find your shadow, um, it's time to heal it rather than keep pushing it away. You find that no longer, you no longer have that reason to hate anything, not your veg, a race, a type of religion or type of people. When you heal these individual things, one thing at a time inside of you, let's drop what we once decided to hate for whatever reason and realize that that reason is way past and gone now. Today is the day that we try something new. Today is the day we seek and heal our shadows. What if today I'm going to find reason to like certain things? Today I'm going to step outside of my steadfast don't likes. Today if I read in the paper that someone did something wrong, I'm going to look at that and say, well, I'm not perfect either. Today my mantra is going to be, future I create you. Today I choose to find happiness in everything, even in something as serious as politics. You see my excitement in my previous videos over policies and politics and being happy can appear as smiling, laughing and happiness is related to contentment and peace. You can be quietly happy, quietly in peace and content in your own in yourself in very serious situations as well because the shadow which is usually being suppressed and repressed within ourselves because of what we have lurking in those shadows within things are constantly being pushed away and denied within ourselves and this practice once we don't want it to be about us it doesn't want to show itself or more like we don't want to show that part of ourselves to the world our so-called weaknesses and flaws and all of the things that we don't like about ourselves, these things are the things that we need to start experimenting and exploring our, in ourselves compared to others. Others' uh, differences compared to our own. It's like, uh, for instance, we might find it a bit of a challenge. Um, perhaps there's a gay person, for instance, um, and it's a challenge it's challenging to be different and these experiences are coming in for us to be challenged by and we have to accept them as we are now but your local priest well they may tell you to repress this um, whilst it is fine to explore those things and grow through those experiences and become a more conscious creator in this day and age uh, where we're becoming more and more empowered conscious creators rather than a spiritual take on this this is my philosophical excuse me philosophy uh, philosophical rather take on it the internet has brought forward all of this information that that's why there's a huge transition that's been going on right now um, we are in the information age and we're getting back to the point about happy happy people happy times and happy joy um, if it, but we've got to focus there because we're always constantly focused on the doom and gloom. And when we do that, we, it, that is the shadow within us. We can't actually get over that. And all of us have this ability to change the uh, shadow within us. Uh, we're often afraid to expose how we're truly feeling. And there's often quite a lot of emotion that builds up inside of all of us. We're forced to experience emotional suppression as if it's a bad and wrong thing and we cl complain about the more liberal mindedness because of irrational fear we know the solutions to world peace but we're afraid to express it afraid to appear weak in society we put on our public masks our fake persona 
And then when we go home, we might be crying, we might be angry, we might go to bed and cry our eyes out, pissed off about something that happened that day and take it out on the people who don't deserve it. Our family are not our personal whipping posts. Our loved ones are not there to have every bad thing taken out on them. It's okay to talk to them about so-and-so did something today and this really upset me, but because we're repressing so much within ourselves, we don't actually find that that the real thing is the problem. We find something else to be the problem. We're looking for something else to have a go at. Um, and say your friend or your partner is at home and they've said something that's upset you today and that's that's grated on you. Because you've got something else going on, you will have a go at, at this innocent person before you. Um, and this is where our shadows are lying and we need to heal the shadows and often, you know, there's also people that will use the F word. I mean, that's a different way of expressing. There are people that will cry and there are people that will swear. And they feel bad about that too. And we're all made to feel bad about feeling bad. But rather than take it out in the world, on our families, um, who reckon, uh, to, to whom it belongs, remember who, where that all belongs to. You may be too afraid to discuss with your boss how his way of treating you is not actually productive but the reality is where your anger is and which is causing the breakdown of all of your relationships your marriages where all of these problems actually lie are maybe in that per the, the way your boss is treating you um, it's there that it needs to be dealt with talking to those people may be difficult criticizing someone who is the boss or holds a position that you're supposed to respect causes this fear to rise so you take that fear out on the people that you can and that's not really okay is it these are the shadows we carry and the fear is not about our loved ones they shouldn't be given that we shouldn't be giving that to them it's about the boss okay so learn how to discuss this with the right person respectfully an emotion is an inner expression but learning why we are needing to cry or express or cuss rather than just letting it out on easy targets may be a relief to, at the time but it doesn't solve the problem you've heard the uh, 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 analogy that a hammer can be used for the good or the bad for constructing or for destructing or for destroying or building up or uh, so you use this energy for the purpose of building up and creating so someone hurt you or made you feel small hurting others will only make you feel smaller there is always something to feel good about even if there are things that I must deal with and face head on here today, I'm still very happy, I'm grateful, I feel the warmth of the sun, it's beautiful outside, the sky is blue, our leaves are falling off the trees, it's beautiful colours out there um, and there's no need to appear, appear happy or pretend to be happy because there's a lot to be actually happy for and it's okay. You don't have to pretend that you're doing great in the world, it's okay to discuss things that are going wrong. It's okay to talk about this as an outlet on, you know, to make things better, to change things. Because if we're not changing things, if we're fearing change, then it's never going to change, is it? Um, so we may be cussing and bottling up the pain and discussing it with a trusted friend. Um, and that's fine. That's where we should be doing it. We should also, you know, it, discussing, is, instead of saying, to this friend, you're the one that's hurting me right now because you've just made a noise that I don't like. Um, discuss how the boss is treating you and get some feedback because that's what friends are really for. They're there for you to run things through and find some answers to. Um, and sometimes people don't want that. They don't want you to find the answers and they'll hide themselves away. Um, so this is another philosophy on human nature and how we continue to make our world feel like hell. 
talking about how angry we feel. It's better than expressing anger because we're bottling it up. And that's why I love social media. It teaches us how to be uh, better take control of ourselves um, rather than blast it out in the world and towards our families and loved ones. We're told not to show people our depressed side, so it leads to a lot of seclusion and being isolated on our own and a lot of other things in the cl uh, kept in the closet. Um, our own sadness or depression slowly kills you because you're too afraid to deal with it and put it where it belongs. We're all trying to cope and coping rather than discussing leads to so much more suffering. So um, let's go back to eating our greens. Um, we have been taught not to cry, not to cuss, which leads to more sadness and depression. And we've been taught that it it, the, it, to suppress and repress ourselves we've been taught that that's the right thing to do and re repress our emotions whereas I know it's better to be true to yourselves and to show your emotions much more in life and to accept yourself because it doesn't make the world a worse place you're not giving it to somebody if it's a good friend they want to be listening they want to be helping you they want to hear you and they want to run things past you uh, and that's what friends are for you're not giving it away when you hide things I think when we hide things and repress things um, and somebody may say something that that is similar or upsets us in some way we snap at that person that's when it gets or goes wrong um, when we're taking it out on the wrong people emotions serve a purpose and anger shows us where we need to make something better and to heal it to suggest to your boss that their way of doing things is not right, it's not productive, is how we talk to people um, constructively rather than uh. destructively. Um, that creates, uh, so all of these things create destruction when we're just feeling and repressing it inside. Speak constructively like, I'm here to make things better. I want to discuss this to see how we can make this, this thing work. I want this to work. Exactly as Jeremy Corbyn talks of working towards disarmament rather than take, uh, talking more war, especially in times like right now, and like someone who has abu uh, been abused maybe as a child or as an adult or an adolescent or growing teenager. When someone is talking down to them, mistreating them, showing them uh, this is a lack of respect and honour and care, so it, it ri rises anger and therefore notifies them that this person doesn't understand and doesn't want to understand. And so it feels like they're crossing boundaries, but actually they're just not listening and maybe they don't care. That's what it feels like to a person that's already experienced very bad experiences. Um, they want that they want to accuse, they want to abuse further. It can even be further destructive and harmful to them, like physical abuse or violence. It, it takes them back to the same place where they were before. Um, so anger is good because it notifies the person where they are hurt inside and where it needs healing. And they are told not to, uh, they are told don't, don't suppress anything. It's sadness and anger, everything that hurt them physically rises back up as if it's happening again right now. These are the triggers. It can build up so many emotions and problems in our relationships if that problem isn't discussed. Because this new person doesn't know how bad the abuse was. They will accuse and they will they might use words such as you're you're cold, you're you know, you're frigid even all of these types of things come out because you are behaving in a certain way but uh, it causes so much trauma mentally and it gets in the way of our lives and relating with the others so discuss your shadows and let it be okay to do so it's time for laughs and big time release of stress talk with these others about who you want to care and understand and release the stress of being stressed and anxious. 
Fear to tell is generally a symptom of your imagination that the future might go so wrong. Anxiety and fear is generally imaginings, things that haven't even happened yet. So it's a condition of our thinking. Um, and so in, so you're thinking from this weird, mad day and age and we have, have no resistance to order. This is a time for discovering ourselves. And so, and more so creating instead of destruction and destroying because we're on the crux of this crossroads. And as it is within us, that has to change because society is the people and the people have to change first before society can change. And that's my philosophy. We have to be the change to see the change. And there is nothing woo-woo about that. So the Chancellor back to politics has found himself at odds with colleagues wanting a hard brexit which would uh, see full control of our borders and leaving the single market philip hammond pushes for so soft brexit and as he admits deep divisions in the tory cabinet over withdrawing from the eu it leaves us uh, it leaves them totally open and these individuals are so embattled in their vision and view of how it should be and so fighting amongst one another rather than doing you know taking action they are envisioning jeremy corbyn has said with the conservatives there's no such thing as as hard or soft brexit only a chaotic one um, he is doing, he's taking action and he said I am currently in Brussels meeting Labour MPs and representatives from socialist parties from across Europe to discuss working together to demand the best possible Brexit deal for the UK and protecting jobs and living standards and our economy and this is exactly what I'm talking about, you, talk, you go to the people directly. The Tory Brexit team are hopelessly divided they don't know what they they want, let alone how to get it. Labour will not stand by and let them risk their jobs, rights and economic future. I'll be campaigning hard for the best deal for Britain, said Jeremy Corbyn. You see, the best way to bring about destructive hate is to divide the people by embedding opposing beliefs in them. They make their convictions then by putting these people next to each other, they argue and fight, never caring about what the other person has to say because they're convinced that they're so right. As they seek no more truth, there will never be a peaceful line between these two until they realise all they've been doing is following a line. And as they've been conforming to all walk straight and zigzag when told, um, without having to be told, if you think bad thoughts, you will always bring about destruction to your reality. Thoughts are not, um, thoughts are, are things that we need to actually get hold of and you can, you can tear down inside as well. So keep in mind, if you constantly think good thoughts, you will always find more happiness and more truths than you bargained for. And so finally, I posted a post on the Venus Project, which uh, proposes an alternative vision of what the future can be if we apply what we already know in order to achieve a sustainable new world civilization. It calls for a straightforward redesign of our culture in which the age old inadequacies of war, poverty, hunger, debt, and unnecessary human suffering are viewed not only as avoidable but as totally unacceptable. Um, anything less will result in a continuation of the same catalogue of problems inherent in today's world. And um, Ian Maiman responded to that. My first impression of this is that it sounds idealistic, but why would someone be angry about it? And my reply to that is, um, that's the problem with humanity as a whole, isn't it? We don't follow our dreams, believing them to be so impossible. The reality is everything is possible if we want them enough. And who wouldn't want this? I could name a few. The Blairs, the Bushes, the Obamas, the Rothschilds. They all have the money, um, but prefer their big boys' toys. 
and culling the population rather than resolving it for pe with peaceful means. Um, the, so that's the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed listening today. It's a bit of an upbeat one, I think, hopefully, because I do love the philosophy of all of these things. And I want to find a solution. I'm always a solution, a seeking for solutions. I'm a problem solver, I think. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you once again. Love to you all. Namaste. Bye for now.